I'm uh, Matt Piper, I'm from the UCL Institute of Healthy Aging. And uh, our exhibit is to showcase the work we do at UCL, which is to use small model organisms that are short-lived and easy to house, um, and to see how long we can get them to live by either changing their genes or changing their environment. And in particular, we're interested in um, dietary changes uh, that alter lifespan and extend healthy lifespan. So here we have uh, a display of our yeast. And what we have to show here is that even though yeast are single-celled organisms, and it's very difficult, well, most people wouldn't know, even know what yeast look like, uh, but actually you can tell the difference between an old and a young yeast under the microscope. And then similarly for worms, now I'm not sure whether you can see here, but this is a, one of our worms. And this is scaled up massively, so these are about the size of a pinhead. So that's about a millimeter long, that worm. And again, if we have these worms under a microscope where we have young and old worms, you can actually tell the difference. They move differently. And then finally, we have the flies as well. So this is my favorite. And here we have uh, relatively young flies on my left and a bit older flies on my right. And you can see straight away that this group here are climbing up the sides of the vials. I saw one male chasing a female as well. Um, and whereas the ones here on my right, they're sort of stumbling around, not very interested in much. And they show other signs of aging as well, um, such as they change their sleeping patterns. So they sleep less during the night and more during the day, which is just like older people. And, uh, and they, they lose their memory with old age as well. So they have a lot of similarities in terms of aging to what we think about humans and aging. Um, and so not only do we test their lifespan, but we also test these symptoms of aging to see if we can improve those as well. And then our final part of our exhibit, which is what the chair is for, um, is it, it's supposed to mock up sort of an older person's living room here. Uh, and what we have is an age suit. And so people can put these things on and see what it's like to feel, what it might feel like to be older. And we have some gloves that will give a tremor and will give you a task to do and see how well you can do it. We also have some face aging software as well for you to try on, which is awful. It's absolutely hideous. <laughs> but... Would you like it sent to you? No, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going sure? to deny that's going to happen. <laughs> <I'm sure you're laughs> Good luck with your with your research. I yeah. hope you find a way to uh, delay yeah, this. Is the most effective way to get you to think our research is worthwhile. But, so we go from the yeast, the worms and the flies, up to the humans. If we test the same intervention in all three, we think we've got something that might work in humans as well. And I guess the, the overarching thing about healthy aging is that um, one way that we uh, think we can dramatically improve health is that if we treat aging itself, perhaps we can treat all of the things that go wrong with old age, which we think are symptoms of old age. So like cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, maybe these are all caused by one common biological thing, and that's aging itself. And we already know of at least two major interventions that can extend healthy lifespan. Uh, like I said, one's dietary, and that is if you reduce the amount of protein in the diet of the animals, they live longer. And the other one's genetic. And this is to do with insulin signaling. And a lot of people know about insulin signaling from diabetes. And it seems if you have too little, it's bad for you. But a slight reduction seems to be beneficial for longevity. And so we're studying how it is that those things actually work to improve health. Uh, and, and really where we're focusing now is, is in trying to understand how these molecular pathways work. Is, uh, is trying to look for things that are actually legitimate drug targets. Because, I mean, a dietary intervention is all very well, but we're pretty bad at keeping diets as humans. Uh, and, and so to be effective in, these, in activating these pathways, we're looking for drugs that will do the same thing. And the really interesting thing about the protein one, actually, is that there's a known drug that targets that molecule which responds to protein. And within the last three years, it's been found that that can extend lifespan in both flies and mice. So if you add it to the diet, these animals live longer. There are some side effects in the mice. Uh, 
So I, I think there's some problems with the male genitalia. That's one of the problems. There's a fairly substantial uh, side effect, I would have thought. And, and I, think, I think the main point with the research now is, is that you don't just try and find these drugs that do things, but we try and be far more specialised to how these drugs can act. So we're trying to look for tissue-specific effects. So just in what tissue would you need to intervene to affect the whole body uh, benefits? And also timing effects. So exactly when do you have to... Uh, take this drug or uh, take advantage of this genetic change to get the benefits to longer life. Because if we can make that more specific, then perhaps we can avoid the side effects as well. We, uh, so the, this aging, the experimental aging field is actually very young. There's um, pretty much the majority of the work's been done within the last 10 years. The real trick is, is, is trying to work out how, how, how it is that you sensibly go about applying some kind of intervention to treat healthy people because even though aging is uh, it's pretty grim like there's there's a lot of things that go wrong with age in terms of physical uh, problems with aging it's uh, it's still considered to be a healthy normal part of life and so i think that's a real mindset change that that people need to think about aging as being actually a tractable biological issue and that we can actually deal with some of the causes of aging